Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Adventures in Small Business. This is our first broadcast of this new program that we'll be doing here thanks to Think Tech. And this is a, a collaborative effort to talk about small businesses in Hawaii, what they're doing, how they're making a difference, uh, and just you know, how they've made it, what strategies, ideas have gotten them to the point they are, where they're creating jobs, they're creating innovations, and they're making a difference in their community, as well as, yes, making money. So this is going to be a collaboration with the U.S. Small Business Administration, our Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, SBA's Women's Business Center here in Honolulu at the Y, and our vet Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific. So we'll be going through every other week. We'll be, um, you know, bringing in and talking to entrepreneurs, sharing ideas, techniques, strategies that have worked or are working for them. And this is just a perfect time for us to be launching this program because we're coming up on National Small Business Week, a time when we really spotlight what small businesses do here in Hawaii and even across the country because all the other Small Business Administration offices will be featuring activities for Small Business Week and also recognizing outstanding small businesses with the SBA Small Business Awards. So we've got, we go around the state, it's a big process, but we're delighted that we have 29 small business owners, entrepreneurs, small business advocates that we're going to honor for their accomplishments this year. Now National Small Business Week is coming up um, on April 29th through May 5th, and we'll be having the statewide, the 31st annual statewide uh, annual Small Business Awards presentation on May 4th here at the Hawaii Prince Hotel. So lots of fun, lots of information, great ideas. You'll meet a lot of people who are passionate about what they do in small business and for small businesses. I'm delighted we have one of our uh, SBA award winners with us today, and we'll talk a little bit more about the program and really how this young man and his small business uh, were selected to be the State of Hawaii's Young Entrepreneur of the Year. This award recognizes a small business owner and entrepreneur who's owned or operated their business for a minimum of three years. Now, Dylan Butterbaugh's been in business a little bit longer than that, but he's got a great story to tell about developing a very unique business and really taking it to some very high levels of accomplishment, achievement, recognition, and international awards uh, in a very short time. So I'd like to now turn it over or talk a little bit more with Dylan about what he's done with his business, Manoa Chocolate, that is based in Kailua. How are you doing, Dylan? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks Good. for having me. Good. I'm glad you're here. And uh, congratulations on what is a pretty stellar 2017. Your business has come a long, long way. Yeah, 2017 was really good for us. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we uh, I've noticed in business that by year two, things start to get a little easier. Mm -hmm. Then year five is that next point where things start to stabilize. And it's just a certain economy of scale that we started to hit, mm -hmm. where we're starting to produce enough chocolate to make everything work on a business side of things, as well as making uh, better chocolate as we scale and uh -huh. learning how to do the very best we can, because that's really our goal. Well, where did your idea or what happened that you got into making chocolate? It doesn't seem like something <laughs> that a young guy in Hawaii might want to do. Right, right, especially because there wasn't an industry here at the time, but that was part of the appeal. Mm -hmm. I loved the fact that, so I, I was introduced to cacao at the mm -hmm. University of Hawaii on the agriculture side. Okay. My friend got the job studying the plant because UH is an extension agency school. Mm -hmm. And so farmers started to call into UH and say, hey, why is this pod yellow and this pod red? Or why is this seed purple and this seed white? And it's in the same pod. And so my friend got the job studying this plant. And I'd go hang out in this lab and learn that cacao gets uh, fermented, that mm -hmm. it gets dry, that it gets roasted and deshelled. And I loved the bigger picture of going from a farm or, or like 
mm -hmm. these trees and, a, and somewhat of an agroforestry system all mm -hmm. the way to a really high-end product that we could export all over the world. So mm -hmm. very quickly I saw this big picture and said, okay. I'm going to look more into this. Now people started calling in or farmers started calling in to UH. Um, does cacao grow here? Is it a right. indigenous? So it's been or? growing here. It was brought here in the mid-1800s mm -hmm. for the first time, but never really took off. And it, it failed maybe two or three times mm -hmm. uh, from Hershey's trying, from Dole starting it. Uh, and there were certain hiccups along the way. A lot of it was the cost of doing business here in Hawaii, because this is mostly a crop that grows in places like West Africa, Indonesia, mm -hmm. uh, South America. So, and wow, you've been able to kind of pick up and do what Dole and Hershey didn't do. Well, it's a, it's a timing <laughs> thing. So I like to think of craft chocolate like craft beer or premium wine. Mm -hmm. And the market is now much more uh, willing and excited to pay a higher price for a better product. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we're different than industrial chocolate. We're trying to make the best chocolate, not the most chocolate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so you kind of started this endeavor really as a business just six or seven years ago? Yeah, so in 2010 is when I first started to learn about it. Mm -hmm. And I registered the business because I loved the bigger picture, that concept of planting trees and being able to sell a really high-end product. But in 2012 mm -hmm. is when I'd outgrown my parents' kitchen uh -huh. and actually rented a space uh -huh. and turned this old real estate office into a, a tiny chocolate factory. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of people to ask, so we watched a lot of YouTube videos and assembled a lot of our own equipment, mm -hmm. looking up things like bicycles and back massagers. and mm -hmm. I've seen it. some of those. Yeah, yeah, well, we have it hanging <laughs> in the factory. Uh, we'll probably set it up again uh, uh -huh. just for fun. But we, we made chocolate on the very smallest scale mm -hmm. without a lot of money. And mm -hmm. so it was very encouraging that we could make good chocolate on the smallest level. And so um, we also gave a lot of chocolate away in the beginning uh -huh. and saw that there was an interest. People then started saying, hey, I, I want more of that. I can't believe that cacao or that chocolate bar had fruity notes in it or spicy mm -hmm. flavors or nutty notes. Uh -huh. I didn't know chocolate could taste like that. And so with that in mind, we pushed forward mm -hmm. and continued to create a, a company based around craft chocolate. Mm -hmm. So in your factory in Kailua, you start with the cacao? Right. So we, we actually start with the beans. So there's okay. a, a jar of beans in front of you. Mm -hmm. We receive That's big fine. burlap sacks full of cacao. Mm -hmm. We buy as much as we can locally, but there's only so much supply and we really need the best cacao in order to make mm -hmm. the best chocolate. So 95% mm -hmm. of quality happens on the farm. Mm -hmm. And we're on the chocolate making side. And so the idea is to start our own farm, which we're doing now. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to wait three or four years before it fruits, but uh -huh. we buy finished seeds. So that means the farmer has to do a really good job. So mm -hmm. we're buying from Hilo is our main source of Hawaiian beans. Mm -hmm. There's a few acres popping up here and there on the windward coast of Oahu. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been making chocolate out of that too, so Waiahole and Kahalu. And then um, we're buying quite a few tons now from places like Ecuador, Tanzania, Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably get more from Peru, Dominican Republic. Tons of beans. Um, yes, we have a container of beans actually that's stuck in customs right now. Oh. Which we, we can talk <laughs> about the issues of uh, importing and shipping and uh -huh. logistics to Hawaii. But um, we have to bring in supply because we grew much faster than our Hawaiian supply of cacao. Okay. Yeah. You know, and you're hoping to see that that increase by participating yourself as well, but yes. over time you think you'll have um, yeah, better yeah. local products and greater what I What I see happening is, so I love the, the concept of Napa Valley because people go to Napa because there's lots of really good wine mm -hmm. makers. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful because it's covered in grapevines mm -hmm. and people go and, and drink wine and eat food. And mm -hmm. so I see that happening with chocolate here in Hawaii mm -hmm. because we can add value to this crop. So mm -hmm. we can take the fruit, we can do tours, show people how it's grown, how it's made, and then people can take presents home that are very authentic, that grew here. And so there's a terroir aspect to cacao as well, which is why I like the wine analogy. Mm -hmm. Because if it grows in Waialua, mm -hmm. and then it grows in Hamakua, or mm -hmm. it grows, um, say, in Kauai, they're all going to taste different because there's different soil types. Okay. Uh, terroir. Mm -hmm. uh, climate is different. What what kind of soil or what kind of terrain do you need to grow it? Is it hillside? Well, what kind of ag? Fortunately, land we can irrigate. Uh -huh. um, so we can control uh, a lot of 
what the farm can look like, but you still need the soil to have the right pH and nitrogen levels and potassium, it's, it mm -hmm. likes potassium a lot. I'm much more on the chocolate making side. I do have a partner now for the farm, which is a different business, mm -hmm. and he's, he's a very high-end cacao consultant oh. who has worked with lots of big farms to bring up the level of the seeds. Mm -hmm. And so that's mainly what we buy from other countries as well as after he goes there. And this is why our quality is much higher is because this post-harvest handling process was done really well and it was grown better. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, so you obviously had a, an interest and even a passion for the chocolate, the chocolate making, the agriculture yeah. that, that kind of yeah, you know, was a springboard for getting started in business. Sure. I was, before chocolate, I was really looking for a business to start, uh -huh. and I was looking at things like renewable energies, sustainable forest management, green roof. So I wanted to do something environmentally friendly, and uh, chocolate kind of just ticked all these boxes for me, because uh -huh. as we grow as a chocolate company, we are mm -hmm. supporting trees, and cacao likes these agroforestry systems. Um, I love traveling, so mm -hmm. the international aspect of like, my, my real... Um, passion was to go to these countries where we were buying from mm -hmm. and surf and check out the cacao <laughs> farms. But, I, but once again, the big picture is to start an industry here in Hawaii based on mm -hmm. these trees. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so <laughs> it was the farming, the the food, the the business that hopefully you could build a business that would also kind of be take care to, of both your entrepreneurial aspirations and, and, and to your, be able to give your, back. Your um, also give you a job. You yeah, know, yeah, to pay, help a, you pay the bills. Give me a job, um, mm -hmm. other, all my friends around me, so I tend to work with all my friends, which is mm -hmm. really nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of has, the business has been a bit of a, a torna tornado. It's like sucked in my brother, it sucked in my friends, it sucked mm -hmm. in my wife. Now uh -huh. my sister works there. Uh -huh. At one point my mom was helping out a lot. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> <laughs> mom, please collect the mail and write the checks. And uh -huh. <laughs> okay, well, you know, at least you have that, that system there because as, as we keep hearing, uh, getting good employees is more and more challenging here with the low unemployment and uh, workforce development issues and things like that. So do you find using friends and family, you have a little more leverage on them or? It can go either way. <laughs> um, but our, our team is really good. Uh -huh. and, and of course, as we get, so we went from last year you were talking about 2017 being good for us. We went from 11 employees to about 20. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that was assistance from things like um, the SBDC and, mm -hmm. and the high, high step grants and um, Innovate Hawaii. Mm -hmm. They're such wonderful uh, resources here. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the main, um, it helped us grow a lot in mm -hmm. production as well as hiring people. So the, so the, the small business development center, some of the grant programs with the the state. It, and, it really and, does help. You know, so I think we'll we're going to take a quick break here, but we'll come back to that and see where where those programs fit in and some of those things we didn't talk about. Uh, the other big milestone in 2017 oh, yeah. <laughs> and your International Chocolate Award. I think right. we have to mention that so that you understand exactly what we're talking about with, you know, having passion for what you're doing, striving to be the best, and being recognized for being the best. Thanks for being here, Dylan. Yeah, happy to be here. the game and it's gonna be great early arriving for a little tailgate i usually drink but won't be drinking today because i'm the designated driver and that's okay it's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time a little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day i'm the guy you want to be i'm the guy saving money i'm the guy with the h2o and i'm the guy that says let's go
Hi there, I'm Jane Sawyer with the Small Business Administration, SBA, and we're here for Adventures in Small Business, talking with Dylan Butterbaugh from Manoa Chocolate. So, 2017, kind of a milestone of the year, a lot of big steps, and one of the big ones was your international award. So tell us a little bit about that, uh, yeah. Monsieur. So I'll back up a little bit. <laughs> I wanted our company to be able to distribute internationally. I just mm -hmm. love this idea of being able, from the very beginning at UH in 2010, when we had mm -hmm. nothing happening except learning, I wanted to sell in Tokyo, I wanted to sell in Paris, I wanted to sell in London, New York, San Francisco. And so um, it was really neat in, in 2017 to be in Paris at one of these chocolate shows that I've been going to. And we, we didn't know it, but they told us a week before that we'd won for best uh, chocolate bar for fine flavor. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be our Hawaiian chocolate bar, so that was really special. And so we got to go up on, on the main stage at the Salon du Chocolat and uh -huh. um, accept this award and try and speak whatever few French words I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and so that must have been a real thrill. And so you make a lot of different kinds of chocolate bars. I just kind of want to jump back on that. To, right. Where do you, the Hawaiian bar won, but you have a number yeah, of so, different. So that was the most special one to win for because mm -hmm. it was our only true Hawaiian bar that we have consistently. And, and additionally, at the Salon de Chocolat, Hawaii won for, in the top 50, three of the very best fine flavored beans. Mm. And then two of those were in the top 18. So people are starting to turn their head and be like, whoa, Hawaii mm. is growing cacao and it's really good. Mm -hmm. And we got it from, on both the chocolate making side as well as the, the bean producing side. Mm -hmm. It's just the quantities at the moment are very tiny. Mm -hmm. So you just may be turning Hawaii into the Napa Valley of chocolate. Yeah, and, yeah. and we have to be the best because we can't compete with these countries that have much um, cheaper labor. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at the economics of growing it very carefully and focus on fine flavor. So if we're not making the best chocolate in the next five or 10 years in Hawaii, mm -hmm. it might not last. Mm -hmm. So we have to set this new bar of quality standards. Mm -hmm. So you have cacao from Hawaii. Do you use any other Hawaii ingredients in some of your chocolate? We, or? we used to use uh, Maui sugar. Okay. But that ended at the end of 2016. Mm -hmm. Um, we'd have things like Hawaiian sea salt that we sprinkle on top. Mm -hmm. We have, and that's probably, that's one of our most popular bars. And then the other one would be, uh, we, we sprinkle Kona coffee on top mm -hmm. of another bar. Okay. That's called our breakfast bar. Mm -hmm. and that one's really good. Mm -hmm. It's probably the one I eat the most of. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and then so other chocolate you use, you mentioned some before, it comes from Africa, it comes right. from South America. And so because of supply issues here in, in the islands, we buy from Tanzania. Um, which is really interesting because they're very, very bright and fruity. Mm. And so everyone's got this idea that chocolate just tastes like chocolate. But that couldn't be further from the case. It'd be like thinking Pinot, like all grapes taste the same. We mm -hmm. know Pinot Noir and Chardonnay and Cabs don't taste the same. Mm -hmm. They're both, they're all grapes, but they have mm -hmm. different flavors. And so this is how cacao works as well. And it's a lot more of what our industry focuses on. Mm -hmm. I know when I visited you and Tammy before at, uh, in Kailua, you know, you, also play a role in trying to help people understand that by having little tours, tours and yeah. show people how, how it's really made. So we're very Tasty. customer service oriented. Uh -huh. When you walk into our, our tasting room, which is in the front of our factory, we say, hi, have you been here before? Have you ever been to a chocolate factory? Well, let, let's show you around and like, you know, this is, this is the cacao fruit. This is how all chocolate begins. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we'll have them open and we'll let you taste the seeds inside and talk about how it's fermented and dried. Uh -huh. And then when we receive them, we kind of say, okay, let's look through the, the window here. You can see our roaster. Mm -hmm. This is where it's deshelled. This is where it's ground up. And on a really small scale, you get uh, to see how chocolate is made. Mm -hmm. And then we guide you through a tasting. And, most people have never had a single origin chocolate tasting before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is very interesting that how different they are and the different kinds of, you know, products or stages you need to go through to make chocolate that right. we all kind of... Right, and it's something that we're all so familiar with on, on eating chocolate, but mm -hmm. very few people have any idea it starts like this. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the world's greatest discoveries, chocolate. Right. You know? <laughs> so, well, let's talk a little bit about the business side. Obviously, you have the interest, the passion, you know, um, for making the chocolate. What did you find... Um, what surprised you about getting into business and really making it a business? Um, well, 
I, I have no previous experience in business. I didn't study um, agriculture mm -hmm. or economics or anything. So e even learning chocolate, it was mostly just on the smallest scale in UH uh, mm -hmm. and then YouTube. Uh -huh. so that's how I learned. <laughs> and then just by doing it over and over and you start to get better. Um, but it was kind of like a Navy SEALs training for, mm -hmm. for business and uh, chocolate making. It was a sink or swim thing. And in order to stay alive, like I'd, I'd gotten the loan. Mm -hmm. Our initial loan was about $15,000, half mm -hmm. backed by the SBA, or, mm -hmm. or right. the, the CPB would not have given us uh, any money. I mean, mm -hmm. and I don't blame them because I was 24 uh -huh. living at my parents and had no real experience. I, I was just graduating. So you must have been very convincing or had a good good proposal for them. Yeah, yeah, I had a good business plan together and uh, was all in. Mm -hmm. And so it was, um, you know, get get the lease for the space, get the loan, mm -hmm. then do the build out. And we, we took these time lapses of building out the chocolate factory so you can see how that came together. Uh -huh. And then I got really lucky that we were able to retail. So our, our factory is above Cinnamons, which is a popular uh, breakfast location in Kailua. Mm -hmm. And people would be waiting for breakfast, and then they'd kind of wander upstairs and be like, oh, it says a chocolate factory. I wonder what that means. Let's go check it out. Mm -hmm. And then we'd offer that experience, and we were able to retail chocolate. My initial idea was to wholesale, uh -huh. and that would have been disastrous because the margins are too small, okay. and no one wanted to take us. Okay, the, the chocolate was okay. The, the package looked all right. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Who cares if it's Hawaiian if no one knows who you are or what you do? Okay. And so that was a really um, painful lesson, but we got really lucky we were able to retail and that mm -hmm. allowed us to use our own profits to grow. Mm -hmm. That just everything continues to go back into the company, mm -hmm. um, which is why we've grown the way we have and it's just kind of a seven day a week work thing where mm -hmm. I'm very committed to making this company grow and I don't want a small chocolate factory that's not going to be effective for me for for the social and environmental impacts that I want to see happen. Mm -hmm. So um, so you said you put all the money back in to the company. So you started to see people coming into the shop, getting sales out the door. Um, did you place uh, with a lot of other um, shops or vendors? Or what yeah, was so your our, biggest our, distribution? Our first account in Hawaii plan? was Whole Foods, but it took almost a year to get in there. Uh -huh. And so that's why we were so lucky we were able to retail. And Whole Foods, it didn't just start like that. Uh -huh. you know, it took a while for sales to increase, and now Whole Foods is an amazing account. And once Whole Foods took it, um, Foodland became interested, and Down to Earth became interested. Recently, we were we got Duty Free, and Duty Free has been a really good account. Uh -huh. And so now we're we're hitting these economies of scale where we have enough volume on the wholesale side that it's just helping the whole business. And that's also why we do distribution is mm -hmm. it's selling pallets at a time, not selling cases. Mm -hmm. And so that's the whole goal is we want to sell pallets of chocolate all over the world. Mm -hmm. And this just starts to make all the, all the business side a bit easier mm -hmm. and cash flow is getting easier as the banks Good. start to work with us or revolving uh -huh. lines of credit increase. Mm -hmm. And uh, as long as we just pay all our bills, things just keep working. Important factor to consider. You got to keep the cash flowing and keep those bills paying. Yeah, so that and this you is why we can't grow too quickly either. Uh -huh. If we grow what, too fast, we'll your, fall over. What has your production, how has that increased? I mean, <laughs> yeah, so, pretty dramatically. So in yeah. the very beginning, one of the, the lessons, I. We, we didn't have enough money, so we bought really small grinders. Mm -hmm. They would do, you know, five pounds at a time. Mm -hmm. And I bought eight of them mm -hmm. because it was half the price of buying one big one that would do the same quantity, but I didn't realize what my time was worth. Mm -hmm. And so I was okay. spending the same amount of time to load five pounds as 50 pounds. Uh -huh. And so we did a Kickstarter shortly after that, and that got us our first bigger machine. Okay. And I realized, ah, scale. Mm -hmm. Let the machines do the work so that I'm not actually loading these tiny little batches until two in the morning and hand packaging chocolate bars. Mm -hmm. It's not what humans are supposed to do. Yeah, I'd much not rather... with the technology <laughs> that we have available. No, no. And, and uh -huh. we've kind of, we finally hit this point in business where we have the smallest machines that'll do the best job. Mm -hmm. And that starts to happen around like half a million dollars of equipment. So we have really, really nice machines now, but they're still the smallest industrial machines you can get. Mm -hmm. But now we can make the very best chocolate. So now we're much more focused on our bean supply mm -hmm. and doing a good job selling it. Okay. Yeah. And you've had to, you've um, made a lot of progress in. Um, you do a lot of exporting now too. 
Could yeah, do so have this, some is, markets this has been where I'm really focused on going to all these different uh, food shows and finding distributors that are good partners for us. And like I was saying before, I want us to be uh, an international brand. Mm -hmm. I want craft chocolate. To, we're one of the bigger craft chocolate makers in the U.S. And so we have to kind of like break down these barriers mm -hmm. of price point because everyone thinks chocolate should be this cheap right. candy bar. Even you get a little candy bar. Right, yeah. but we're starting with so much better quality seeds and the ethics behind it. Like chocolate on the big scale is kind of a dirty industry. Mm -hmm. It's coming mostly out of West Africa and it's similar to a blood diamond thing. And most people don't want to talk about that, but uh -huh. that's where most of uh, the chocolate on the shelf is coming from. Mm -hmm. And so all of the farmers are paid much more fairly and the quality is so much more, um, it's so much higher. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, I look at it and say, you can buy the very best chocolate in the world for under ten bucks, mm -hmm. and it'll last you a few days. That's not so bad. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, but Japan, Asia, different areas in Asia, right. Canada, so, U.S. Singapore is doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, we're struggling to get into China only because of customs. Okay. Yeah, but we have people who want it there and, and somebody who's trying to help us out, uh, a distributor there. Japan has been going great, but I've I put mm -hmm. in the effort there and they're one of our main um, customer have bases here. Have you had to develop all of those contacts primarily yourself or? Yeah, yeah. One thing leads to another and it's mostly going to these shows. Mm -hmm. So, so you have go any there. big ones lined um, up this year or? Yeah, I'll go back to Paris. I'll go back to Germany. Germany's turned into a pretty good account. We also won for, for our Hilo Bar okay. at that chocolate festival in, in Germany. Um, let's see, Canada. We just got into all the Whole Foods in Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that'll be good. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. And so we're taking it step by step, but our machines, our scale went from you know, doing these five-pound grinders to these 50-pound grinders, and now we, we've got a grinder that instead of taking three days to do 50 pounds, our, our ball mill will do um, 120 kilos, so like 250 pounds in three hours. Mm. Much better. Wow. And so now we can really focus on um, doing a better, the, the best job on sourcing beans and roasting, because that's really where the quality comes from. Our machines now got that covered, uh -huh. and we can do the volumes. How do you get all these machines up to the second floor? Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> we, one of our main issues has been running out of electricity. Oh. Yeah, and so three years ago, so that first factory that we built, mm -hmm. we ran out of electricity in that. That was 600 square feet. Mm -hmm. And then we took over the empty suite next to us, and that was another 600 and so square feet. We ran out of electricity again. And then we um, went to the bank and said, hey, we've got more demand than we can deal with. We'd like a loan, we'd like to build another factory. And so on that same street where we're at, uh -huh. we have another factory that we recently outgrew, and so we're about to build another one and oh consolidate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we, only, we have all the machines now. It's just uh, now we have to build our fourth factory. Wow. <laughs> and, wow. and give one of them up. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a this is a great story of you know really understanding what you want to do, having a big vision about uh, you know where you want to go, and really you know taking that kind of almost as a sh social enterprise, but really at the point where you're making money and growing by examining your business very very well. Yeah, and so, it's giving farmers a reason to plant. Mm -hmm. So before there was no reason to plant cacao, and mm -hmm. there was no one to sell it to, and we're now a buyer. Uh huh. And pretty soon being a producer as well. And we'll so it's we'll a great story. Great, yeah. You know. Well, on that note, we're going to have to close out. I'd invite you to check out the their Kailua shop. Maybe go in and learn how great chocolate is made and see a great growing business in Hawaii who's also into exporting, into helping develop our agricultural section. Uh, so there are so many things to learn from this. Please do head over to Kailua and Factory remember first. the Small, small Business uh, Awards program coming up on May 4th. You can call the SBA or check out our website at sba.gov backslash hi. Thanks for joining us for Adventures in Small Business. We'll see you next week.